Hi guys, welcome back to Chaz's No Bullshit Reptile Advice. We've been relegated back to the car, such as time constraints that I've got at the moment. Uh, we've had a really busy start to the year, which is great. So, um, you know, thanks ever so much for that. Uh, the snake sexing video was really well received, which I'm pleased about. We will follow it up with a lizard one, but there's a lot more uh, species or group specific differences between the male and female lizards. So that one will be a bit more involved. Today's question comes from a friend of mine uh, who was one of my very first customers back in Leeds where the first shot was. His name is Joe Killick. Easy Joe. So he says, hey up Charles, long time. I stopped keeping reptiles a number of years ago, almost 10 years ago, exclamation mark. In this time I've been working away a lot, so keeping animals was never an option. I am now however in the position where I'd like to start keeping again. However, I still work away six months of the year on a four week on, four week off rotation. This would mean my better half will have to look after things when I am not around, which she is happy to do, but has zero experience keeping reptiles. So with this in mind, I was thinking of um, Lampropeltis pyromelana wadini, Lampropeltis mexicana theri, or Lampropeltis alterna. As I think, personally, these are some of the most stunning animals there are. So, just for everybody else, um, Lampropeltis paramelana wadini is the hooch cooch uh the huachua mountain kings. Uh, Lampropeltis mexicana theri is theas or variable king snake, and Lampropeltis alterna is grey banded king snake. Um, plus, I think that for a beginner, the missus. Any of these wouldn't pose a problem for her and would be a great introduction to the hobby. Other species I was thinking about are a Laffy Mandarina, uh, now known as Euprepiathis Mandarinus, and Gonisoma oxycophalum, Mandarin Rat Snake and Red Tail Racer. But I think the latter especially might be a bit lively for her. Am I thinking along the right lines? Question mark. I know you have kind of answered the beginner snake question before, and as she would be looking for looking after the snake for six months of the year, would we be treated as a beginner and default to the lowest common denominator in this situation, or do you think that there is scope for something maybe a bit more advanced, such as a gonosoma or even a boiga cyanea, which is the green cat-eyed snake? I uh, think I know the answer, but would be interested in your thoughts on an unusual situation. Many thanks in advance, Charles. Must pop to see you next time I'm in Sheffield. So, yes, Joe, that is an interesting question. It does. It raises an interesting situation where one keeper is arguably advanced, albeit rusty. <clears throat> Very rusty. Ten years. What have you been doing? Um, and, obviously, a partner uh, who is a rank beginner. The problem is that when we do default to six months of care being with the beginner, yes, unfortunately, we do have to default to the lowest common denominator. That said, though, there are many beginner snakes that pose us no issues with husbandry, but aren't necessarily the 10 out of 10 for temperament, such as uh, your corn snakes or your Thayer's kings. Maybe they're a little larger or a little more territorial. Maybe over time, with regular handling of an advanced keeper, these snakes would calm down and become perfectly tractable um, beginner species that, that we would have no issue with. So, for me, it's less of an issue about whether it wants to bite your missus or whether it's perfectly tame. That isn't my priority. My priority is the husbandry. And my priority is whether the species has extra requirements in the form of humidity usually because it's within the tropics in the case of Boiga cyanea uh, and Gonisoma oxycophalum where humidity and relative humidity becomes a factor that affects shed skin Euprepiaphis mandarinus the mandarin rat snake is a heat shy snake doesn't like high heat and there may be periods throughout the 12, 12 month period that Excessive temperatures could become a problem and it would take a more advanced keeper who was attuned to the needs of an animal to react to this to be able to take steps to stop uh, excessive heat or heat exhaustion becoming a problem. So ideally we, we need a snake that 
will shed at nominal humidity. There is no complicating factor for hum humidity. We're going to have a thermostat that controls our temperatures, obviously. Um, and it's with those things in mind that we still have quite a broad spectrum of species for us to choose from and a variance in size. I suppose it depends on the available space that you've got for your vivarium. But things such as the bull snakes, which are now are available in a wide range of colour phases and morphs, including white-sided albino, white-sided ivory, ghost, snow, albino, hypo, the list is seemingly endless. And these are big, impressive snakes approaching seven feet in length. Now, as babies, they can be stroppy little tarts and hiss their nuts off, but with regular handling and patience, they can become totally tame. Moreover, when it comes to the day-to-day -day maintenance and husbandry of this species, they are completely straightforward. Essentially, they're bomb-proof, and this would be the same for any member of the Pituophis family. Probably one of the most settled and calm of the Pituophis family that I've ever worked with was a northern Mexican pine, or, well, uh, uh, multiple northern Mexican pines. Their Latin name is Pituophis Depii Jarni, and these are a lovely rust orange, red and cream pine snake approaching about six and a half feet in length and relatively slender for their length compared to the other Pituophis. These generally are laid back, easy going, uh, easily handled and just great, great looking snakes. So that would probably be a recommendation there. Um, I potentially would look at fox snakes, which are Pantherophis vulpinus, which are like a super-sized corn like it's been on steroids and power lifting very heavy set with huge head superb snakes there's a range of different kinds of prairie kings available and some of the prairie kings have got excellent colors again they're stockily built very easily kept and they've got a really smart looking albino that retains a lot of pigment so off the top of my head they would be probably the way that i would begin and you know to look or, or think about things i'd maybe consider a Thai beauty snake although on occasion particularly as youngsters the humidity could raise its head as an issue and they would prefer a little bit in the more in the way of moisture but as they get bigger this becomes less of an issue they're incredibly tolerant species and they're easy going they're hardy and they're big and they're very very pretty in fact probably arguably out of the the beginner selection that we've put out as the introducing series the prettiest snake Thai beauty snakes are stunning, but they do require work and patience. Um, they would rely, require a large enclosure, but, you know, they're within the bounds of realism, considering that six months of the year, a rusty uh, intermediate advanced keeper is going to be around to, to make sure that the care is right. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, you've got scope. I mean, four weeks on, four weeks off, so we're only ever talking really about a length of a month which in theory if spot checking was done then the clean outs could always be done by you Joe anyway um, like the full clean out, the full disinfectant um, and with regular handling then I suppose that the world is kind of your oyster if we wanted to maybe just push the boundaries of what would be okay on the basis that there is a, a, a more advanced keeper knocking around I'd maybe consider a Woma python, which is Aspidites ramsei, gets to about six feet in length, not too excessive in size, generally very even in temperament, and because they're one of the uh, interior pythons to Australia, have very low humidity requirements, which means that the complications associated with the boas and pythons generally, because they're within the tropics or they're equatorial, we don't have. Um, if your finances stretch to it, maybe even a black-headed python, but these can be slightly more testy in temperament. Certainly as babies, they're stroppy little buggers that like to hiss and gape. It's rare though that they want to bite, but maybe it would be enough to put your missus off, so it would be something worth bearing in mind. But with work, black-headed pythons will tame down, but this is an altogether larger snake, approaching 8 or 9 feet in length as opposed to the 6 feet of a woma. So, there's choices are plenty really it all boils down to the size of vivarium that you can take as your maximum enclosure and what your budget is well i know you're not short of a few bob joe so i suppose the world's your oyster in that regard but that's not the our, our sort of um driver the driver is making sure that your missus is comfortable making sure that we're not going to push her beyond the realms of what she's comfortable with not only that we cannot expect her to be attuned to things 
that only intermediate or advanced keepers will become attuned to. Um, and while she's willing to look after your pet, if it's not her pet, um, will she be as motivated to do the research and look into it as you would be if it was your... Do you understand what I mean? Like, is this a joint pet or is it your pet that she's looking after? Because if it's a joint pet or even her pet as well, then she's going to want to do the research. She's going to want to do this sort of stuff. Whereas if it's, oh, well, go on, then you can get a snake. I'll look after it while you're away if you've got to have one. If it's that kind of situation, then we need to keep it more simple so that there's less complications because she may not be either A, motivated to check, or B, have the knowledge or uh, that inquisitive mind to research what potentially an issue could be. So it's those sorts of things that we have to bear in mind. And I'm not casting dispersions about you partner Joe at all, what I'm doing is trying to think on my feet that who bears the responsibility ultimately for the animal, is it both of you is it you and temporarily she will oh, go on for god's sake he's not going to stop nagging me about it till he gets this bloody snake It's if it's that sort of situation then realistically yeah let's keep it simple, with regards to the Lampropeltis you picked, you know me, they're fabulous, fantastic snakes tricolour kings are incredibly pretty animals incredibly stunning and a good grey banded king snake is very very hard to beat uh, and I would have no issue there but I would probably go for something that was a bit more grown on at least a yearling where we're fully established feeding wise on any of the species of Lampropeltis that you mentioned simply because they can on occasion be finicky as babies and this could throw a beginner off so you know if we if we if we're trying to hedge our bets in multiple directions then that would be the way that I would go so I mean you, you the, the world's your oyster I know that there's a lot of ideas flowing around there you know that you need to start you know that you need all your control equipment I don't need to tell you stuff like that um steer clear of anything that requires additional humidity is a complicating factor stick to things that are bomb proof when it comes to husbandry the temperament and territoriality will follow with time and we're less concerned about that because she's not forced to handle it if she doesn't want to. I hope that was of help. We'll be back soon with another video. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.